Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best, where we're going to be talking about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Cat, And I'm Jess. And today we are talking about number 220, The Knights of Caberia, or La Notte de Caberia, a drama from 1957. This has an 8.1 on 37,000... 310 votes. So it's got four more votes in two weeks. <laughs> Since I did my notes on this movie. <laughs> the spoiler-free synopsis. The magnificent... Giletta Massina, which is Fellini's wife, yes. um, plays the eternally optimistic Rome streetwalker prostitute with a heart of gold and a head of cotton candy in her husband's <laughs> Oscar winning masterpiece. <laughs> this funny, poignant classic inspired the musical Sweet Charity and is a must see for Fellini fans. Stole one of my trivia. I'm sorry. Oh well. It was in the it was in the synopsis. It's okay. It's not a spoiler. I'll, it's not. <laughs> it's it was, a spoiler it was, free, not trivia free. <laughs> I know. Damn it. <laughs> Well, it doesn't say what year the tri- the musical came out, so... Ha. No, it doesn't, so you can still talk about the musical. Yay! Okay. And plus, if you know anything about it, you can kind of compare it to Yes, I can. Cool. All right, so this is directed by Federico Fellini, mm-hmm. who has directed Eight and a Half, which was number 236 on our list. One of Kat's favorite movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> La Dolce Vita... And La Strada. Okay. And it's... The actors are... Okay, I'm going to just uh, guess. La Strada is on our list, actually. Is it? Yes. I didn't find it. What number would it be? Oh. Maybe it's not. Maybe we've just talked about it before. Probably. I don't know. Let me look. Okay. Hold on. Continue your... Stuff I'll do I'm my actors here. now. So, um... Juliette... How did you even say that? Juliette. <laughs> Giuletta. That's pretty, actually. Yeah, that is Once you get pretty. past it. <laughs> Giuletta Messina, Francois Pergri. He's French. So, apologies. And uh, Franca Mazzi. So, there's a French guy in the film, too. Yeah. Well, and this was actually originally released in France. Which is kind of funny. Well, they got, like, I know they got some funding for France. Too. Yeah. It was released, because it says up there, it was released in France on October 16th of 1957. Um, so it wasn't even originally released in Italy, which is kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, I can see why. Rotten Tomatoes, this has an average rating of an 8.8. 97% of critics liked it. There was 37 reviews. 36 of them were fresh. One was rotten. Um, two fresh Janet Maslin, a deep, wrenching, and eloquent film going experience. Frank. <laughs> Ken Hank. <laughs> Not even Frank. the same thing. <laughs> you know, Frank. <laughs> Ken Hank, one of Fellini's most effective films, probably the best of his neo realist dramas. I would give it that, yeah. Of the two that we have seen that by we've him, seen. Yeah. I agree, this is a better one. Yeah. Um, the one rotten. James Brundage. Yes, the jokes are intentional. Yes, the film is visually stunning, but Knights of Cabiria really has nothing more to offer. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I mean, I could get that. I do, but I can't entirely agree. Yeah, I can see it, but yeah. And there was no consensus. No consensus? No consensus. Wow. They couldn't agree. <laughs> okay, so, um, in the U.S. it made $752,045. That's kind of too bad, that's actually. That's quite a bit of money for a foreign film. Yeah. Like, especially a smaller one. Because this is definitely one of the smaller foreign films. Yeah, I didn't know about um, it till this list. It didn't open here until July of 1988. And it made $38,988. So what it's, is that, like 31 years? Yeah, 31 years later it opened here. Wow. So we didn't get it till 31 years after it came out. 31 years later. Yeah. That, that's, that's a little crazy. I'm yeah. gonna lie. So, um... 
it has won an Oscar, like we said in the yep. synopsis, and it's got 15 other awards. So it's Oscar, it won that in 58, so the year after it came out, it won for Best Foreign Language Film. And then the Cannes Film Festival, it won Best Actress, and the OCIC Award for a Special Mention, the director won that. Cinema Writers Circle Awards, Best Foreign Film. David D. Donatello Awards, Best Production, which it tied with Empire in the Sun, <coughs> which came out a year prior to this, and it won Best Director. Golden Globes, oh, Golden Goblets. It's not the same. In Italy, this is Italy's <laughs> Golden Globes. It won Best Actress. Uh, Italian National Syndicate of Film Journalists. That's a really long name. Uh, best Producer, <laughs> Best Director, Best Actress, and Best Supporting Actress. Um, San Sebastian International Film Festival, Best Actress. San Jordi Awards, Best Foreign Film, Best Foreign Director, Best Foreign Screenplay, Best Foreign Actress. <laughs> A lot of foreign. Best Foreign Everything. And that's all of the awards. Huh. It's actually won quite a few. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Um, what'd you think? Your initial thoughts? I liked it. Yeah. It did. I was hesitant at first <laughs> because I was like, okay, this is a Fellini film, and we've seen eight and a half, and we're like, we didn't really like that one. Yeah. So I was a little hesitant, but I, I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be different, and it was. Yeah. So you texted me because you had seen it first. I did. You said you watched it with your brother, and you said he sounded like me, and to me that meant this is a shitty movie, and I'm going to hate it. So I was so upset that I had to watch this when I first, like, I sat down and I was like, oh, I've got to watch this movie. I was like, technically, I watched it with uh, my boyfriend. Oh, um, your at boyfriend. The very... I thought you watched it with your brother. No. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I watched it with him. Well, he watched the end part with me, and he didn't like the end. I can see why he didn't, but I liked the film. I really did. I yeah. mean... It's a nice, like it's a, our, cha- it's a nice change of pace. It is from is really confusing. I don't know what the hell's There's going like, on. There's like eight and a half. Eight and a half is a lot of fantasy, and it goes back and forth not very smoothly. This doesn't really have like very much fantasy, like at all. No, it's a very just like realistic and just very simple. And I'm like, I like this. Yeah. I like our main actress, uh, Cabaria. She, oh, she, she's so funny. I she's really hilarious. liked her. hilarious. And it wasn't... Because, so, this is considered a drama. So I was thinking, okay, this is a drama. I really enjoyed it. I didn't it. see it as a drama. Not really. I, I kind of could. It's a different type of drama, but it it's a drama. It's got some humor um, in there. But it's hilarious. It is. Cabaria is one of the most funny people in a movie I've seen in a while. Oh, she's so funny. And, and it's I, not, like, purposefully funny. She's just, no. like, upset at the world. Well, I mean, the world's kind of been dog. But. <laughs> but I really, I did like it a lot until the last quarter of the movie. Yeah. And then I didn't really like it. Um, but it was way better than Eight and a Half. Yes. And if I feel like I need to watch an Italian movie, I will watch this one again. Yeah, I would give it that. I love... So the actress is actually, like, really short. <laughs> I love that. I'm like, I can con- to- totally connect with that. I was like, yes! Because it says on her IMDB thing that she's 5'2". I'm like, you're full of it. You're not 5'2". <laughs> you're, like, 5 foot, maybe. <laughs> she's short. But she, like, has such a presence on the screen that she's... you don't even notice it until you see her next to standing next to someone who's actually like six foot one so yeah, she has a big presence bigger presence than she is yes got a big personality I think yes. that helps with it yeah i um, think she's perfect for yeah, this she did great and i can understand why her husband was like yep you're gonna be my star yes because sometimes that works out like with this and then other times it doesn't work Oh, God, no. And you're just like, why did you do that? You're like, really? You could have picked anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I I enjoyed it. It, it was too. entertaining. It was funny. 
And it was un- unexpectedly funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'd give it that. Which is what I really like. I like the unexpected funny stuff. I don't like it when you're just like, this is coming. It's going to be funny. I don't want it to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just want it to be unexpectedly funny. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I think that's all we got for initial thoughts. Yep. <laughs> All right, that was your warning. If you haven't watched the film yet, then stop listening and come back once you've watched it. So, we start out with these two people in a field. Yeah, they're walking. Yeah. And they're kind of like outside of a town. And we find out later they're outside of Rome. Yeah, it's a small little town outside of Rome. Yeah. Um, then they come near this river. And they're kind of walking along the river. And the man pushes her into the river. He, like, totally hits her. And, like, just, like, takes her purse and just, like, books it. And I'm like, what the hell? Is, what kind of start is this to a movie? <laughs> but that, I thought it was hilarious. I was like, what in the world is even going on with this? It did make me laugh. I was like, okay, great way to start. Yeah. I was like, this is perfect. Yeah, and she falls into the river. And she can't swim. She's, like, drowning. And so she's like shouting for help and flailing her arms around and there's people all around and like uh, not like all around but there's people along the river that see her and they're all trying to help get her out um and they eventually do get her out and she's <laughs> their CPR that is CPR I was I wrote that down I was like what kind of CPR is not, this I would actually I don't even think it's CPR <laughs> I don't think they even know how but they were, like, flipping her upside down like, and shaking her. Shaky, trying to shake the water out of her by shaking her upside down. And I wrote, I was like, trying to sh- get water out of her by shaking her upside down. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> um, I put, people help her, men do CPR-ish. Ish. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> so, they do get the water out. So I guess it works. I guess it works. And then they kind of do like a real CPR where they like breathe in her mouth mm, to give her like, some air. Yeah. But that was not CPR. No. So then she she's like she woke up and she's looking for Giorgio. Which I'm guessing is Giorgio's the guy that pushed her in the river. Yes. We're like we're like, okay, so is that like someone you're with or Yeah. She's real grumpy. Grumpy. She's very feisty. Yeah. She, she's yelling at everybody. She's like, I don't care. You just saved me. Where's Giorgio? Yeah. She's irritated. I'm like, okay. That, that's real appreciative. Uh, <laughs> uh, so she heads home. Um, yeah. I thought it was Giorgio's house, but I guess it was her house. It's when she her went up, house. When, yeah. she, when she went up at first, I thought it was Giorgio's house because she's like banging on the door yelling at him. But he wasn't there. No. But yeah, it was she, actually her house. Yeah, because her keys were in her purse, which, which got stole. stole. So she had to climb into the win- climb <laughs> in through the window to get into her own house. And uh, there's a lady. What's her name? Wanda. Uh, yeah, Wanda. That's it. Wanda is um, there talking to her and like asking her what in the world she's doing. She's like, I'm looking for Giorgio because he stole my purse. <laughs> and she's like... He just wanted your money. That's all. That's what she's telling me. She's like, he just yeah. wanted your money. That's it. And this is where you really see the size of the actress that plays Kabiria. Because Wanda is really tall. She's a big woman. Yeah. And it's funny. They seem to be friends. <laughs> seem to be. But. They, they kind of bitch at each other. Yeah. A lot. That's, it's a special kind of friendship. That's, yeah. what, that's what I got from it. <laughs> Yeah. And she's like, oh, how can you be, like, so in love with them? You've only been together, like, a month. Yeah. And then Wanda tells... Because Kabiria says that she fell in the river, and Wanda's like, no. He no, pushed you. He in. pushed you. <laughs> so she goes... Kabiria goes outside, and she's, like, pouting. She picks up a chicken, and is like, petting the chicken, and then throws the chicken. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's a pet chicken. I was like, that's, I'm like, that's a really calm chicken. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I tried to pick up chickens when I was little, they just book it. 
Yeah. It's like, yeah, you gotta have them trained, uh-huh. like, to be around humans a lot. Because yeah. um, my mom and my brothers have chickens, and they come up to you, and they will let you hold them. Yeah. If you have trained. trained chickens, yeah. Yeah, but if you they're trained. If you don't have trained chickens, they just run away from you. Yeah, you exactly. I mean, eventually you will catch them. But that's just a pain in the ass. Not for a child, it's real fun. Well, for a child, <laughs> I mean, chasing a chicken around, but... I did that a lot. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I used to chase chickens. <laughs> it was fun. And so she's like, grabs all of his stuff that was there, and she just burns it. Uh-huh. And then it cuts to, like, this lady, I think. <laughs> She's, oh, like, I just screaming. I was like, I was like, lady? I just wrote lady. Is it, that's all I wrote. And I was like, <coughs> I don't know. I really don't know if that's a lady or not. I mean, does it, tell, does it really like, matter? But I mean, she was, like, really big and tall. Kind of almost masculine looking. Yeah, she was a masculine lady. Like, um, if you watch Game of Thrones, Brienne of Tarth, she's like that. You don't know what I'm talking about, but I people listening it, listening might. Um, but she's just really big and really, like you said, masculine. And she's, like, bitching at everything. <laughs> like, she's on one side of the street just, just yelling. At, and then the other side of the street, there's, like, a group a of people. Bunch of people. It's like a party almost. Yeah. And, and this is where I got the sense that they're prostitutes. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. I'm like, they're out at night pretty late. Just uh-huh. hanging out on the side of the street. And they're yelling at cars as they drive by. Yeah, I'm like, that's... Because it doesn't... be prostitutes. Because you know how in some movies when there's the subtitles that tells you what everyone is saying? And then there's mm-hmm. other movies and subtitles that doesn't tell you what everyone is saying. It tells you what the main people are saying. So you have no idea what some of these people are saying to these cars. Yeah. Unless you speak Italian. Which I speak very little, so I have no idea what they were saying. <laughs> I don't speak any. Um, so then... Kabiria comes up, and she's on one. <laughs> she is feisty today. Um, well, I mean, almost getting, you know, <laughs> drowning by your boyfriend. It could kind of piss you off a bit. Yeah. I was like, that makes sense to me why she's irritated. Yeah. So then she starts dancing. Yeah, let's dance around. I'm like, okay. Yeah. It was, it was I'm like, of, you're cute. <laughs> kind of weird. Um, but then the prostitute... The big lady prostitute across the street starts yelling at her, and so they start fighting because yeah. Tiberia is upset. Well, she's mentioned something about she's get trying to get money for her Giorgio. Yeah, and she's like, "Oh hell no!" Tiberia's yeah. like, "Oh hell no!" And she's like, just go like bites her. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so the uh, friends are like trying to pull them off each other so the cops don't come because if cop, cops come, they don't make money. Yeah. Um. So her friends take her away. And then she gets mad at her friends because they're saying something about how she needs a better man like him. Like she, like, because there's a guy and a girl in the car and the guy is saying, well, you need a better like man like me, like I am for her. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay. The dude so was wearing, like, all mad. The dude was wearing sunglasses, too. I'm like, this is the middle of the night. Why do you have sunglasses on? You never heard that song? Or my stunning glasses at night? That's just stupid, though. I know. I don't, I don't agree with it. But. <laughs> no, I haven't heard the song. <laughs> so they're, like, they're, like, in the car, and they're, like, t- they take her to, like, somewhere else where... It's, like, this little outside market sit-down yeah. place. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, She's wandering around yeah, over there. wandering aimlessly, kind yeah. of. And she almost gets hit by a car. Mm-hmm. And then she yells at the car because she almost got hit by it. <laughs> And then, um, she see, starts dancing again, and she's, like, outside this hotel, and the doorman is just watching her. Yeah. And she, she stops when she sees the man, and she, like, gets all mad at him and huffy-puffy, and he tells her to go away, and she's like, I'm gonna stand right here. <laughs> Ugh. Love her. <laughs> and then, um, a lady comes out of the hotel, and she is pissed. It's like beautiful woman like all dolled up she's mm-hmm. wearing like furs and everything and she's angry and then do you see like she's just going to her car and then she's there's this man that comes out to yeah her. and Kabiria gets all excited she's like oh, I know this guy she's like, I've seen him before and apparently he's an actress like he's a big actress in Italy or actor actor he's an actor not an actress <laughs> yep I'm confused <laughs> 
He's an actor. He's an actor, yeah. And they're like, so you find it's their names are Alberto and Jesse. Mm -hmm. The two are arguing, yep. and he gets all mad. She's like, "Oh, I'm leaving," and he's like, "You what? Know, whatever." I'm like he like hits her. Yeah, I was I was like, really? <laughs> and um, then he sits in the car for a minute, and then he kind of looks over, and Kabiri is just kind of standing over there, like waggling around a little bit like you know that thing you do when you don't want like when you want someone to notice you but you're pretending you don't want them to notice you that's what she's doing <laughs> i've done that i was like i recognize that any day <laughs> um but she's sitting over there doing that and then he kind of just kind of looks over and sees her and he's like hey hey you come here and she's like pretending that he she doesn't know he's talking to her and then she goes over and he, he makes her get in the car, and then they drive off, and he is a horrible driver. Not as bad as Annie Hall, but he's pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Annie's bad. <laughs> he's a bad driver. Yeah. But yeah. he takes her to a nightclub. Yeah. Where there's some, like, weird dancing. That's what I wrote, too. It was really weird. They had, like, horse tails yeah. on. Their outfits were weird. Their dancing was weird. The music was weird. Yeah. And then, like, all kinds of people come up and talk to Alberto. And he's like, no, I can't come hang out with you tonight. I'm with her. And they start, they get to dance, too. Yes. And I thought this, I was like, this is a good comparison also to how short she is. Yes, because he is tall. He's <laughs> he, probably six foot. Yeah, he's like six one. And she's a short little woman. She's yeah. like five, five one. And it's real funny because, like, first they're dancing, they're dancing together, and then she just goes off. She just dancing, you know. Having and then a he's good time. just standing there watching her. And then she goes back to him and dances with him again. <laughs> and then he's bored, apparently. So they leave. Yeah. And they go to his house for dinner. And it's yeah. like a castle. Yeah, it's like a really nice, it's almost like a. Oh, I can't think of the word. Estate? Oh, like those really nice, like up scale like condos kind of like mm -hmm. a penthouse that's it penthouse. there it is i found it okay <laughs> that's what it reminds me of because it's got like a bunch of rooms it's really mm -hmm. nice yeah <laughs> he's got all kinds of dogs mm -hmm. there's at least five dogs <laughs> there's a bunch I'm like why do you need so many dogs i mean i would love to have that many dogs but sean won't let me <laughs> <laughs> But, so, they go inside, and then, um, he just now asks her, asks her name. Yeah. I'm like, this entire time, you've like, been hanging out with her. Like, been with her for probably two, three hours at this point. Yeah. Didn't even care about her name till just then. Um, so then they go upstairs, or up to his room, or down to wherever his room is, they go to it. And he's got, like, a really cool closet. It's, like, these mirror thingies. And you just yeah. push a button and it opens and there's all this stuff in there. And he goes and sits on the bed and she sits on a chair. And he turns on the music. Um, and then her, his um, butler guy brings in some food. And he's like, you need to eat. Just eat. I'm not hungry. Um, and then he... She tells... Um, She's like, I know who you are. Yeah. And she, like, wants a picture. She's like, As no one will believe me yeah. if I don't have something. So he's, like, trying to sign this picture for her. Yeah, he signs a picture. And then she tells him about her home. Yeah. Says, it's nothing near like this, but I like it. Um, then they have a drink together, and she starts crying. And then Jesse shows up, and he puts Kabiri in the bathroom. Yeah, and there's a puppy in the bathroom. There is a puppy in the bathroom. It's so cute. <laughs> we both went to the puppy. <laughs> yes. And, um... So, she, like... Cause, so, Jesse and Albert are, like, talking and mm -hmm. everything. And she's like, and she's like, oh, you don't love me and everything? My God, really, so woman? needy. Oh, It's like, this woman pisses me off. But then they kiss and make up. I was like, you're making Jesse's look bad right now. Quit. <laughs> I did. I said and that in my head. <laughs> but you're Jess. I've been called Jesse. Uh, no. You're Jess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah, like I said, they make up and, like, Kapiti is still in, like, the bathroom. So she's like, she fell asleep in there. Yeah, she fell asleep with the puppy. Yeah. I would have, too. Nothing yeah, else too. to do. I was just played with the puppy. Yeah. Um... 
But then so it's in the morning and she leaves. He gives her some money. Yeah. And then there's like, she's walking around and they're at their little hangout place where they go be prostitutes. Yeah. These religious people walking. It's a pilgrimage to the Madonna. It's like this church thingy. Yeah. Religion. Religious stuff. Yeah, I got it. So the Madonna is another, the, uh, the Madonna's another name for uh, the Mary. So the Virgin Mary. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's another name for... You can explain this bit, like this whole religious bit, because I did not understand it. Yeah, I'll get to that when we get there. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll explain it. <laughs> so, um, then she gets a ride from this guy in a truck. Because she wants to join the... She the wants. Group. But the people don't have any shoes on them. Yeah, which that happens. Which, I mean, sometimes. I walk around without shoes on. I go take the trash out without shoes on. Yeah. Not when there's snow on the ground, though. Like, it's hard to explain the shoe thing, unless you know religion, I guess. I took a religion class when I was a freshman in high school, but... Yeah. I don't do religion anymore. I mean, everybody have at it. Have your own religion. Go for it. I yeah. don't care. Just keep it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> So she, like, she gets her ride, and then she's, like, walking, and, it's like, it's, like, in this random place, and yeah. she's, like, she sees, like, these, like, there's people living in, like, these little caves. Yeah, in the ground. Yeah. I'm like, okay. It's really weird. And this man is just giving stuff to these people. Yeah. Which is nice. And then she sees one of the ladies, and she knows him. Or knows her. Yeah. And then she gets a ride with the man that was giving stuff to the people, and... Um, that you learn that she doesn't have any parents anymore. Yeah. You learn a little bit about her family and stuff. And he he basically tells her to have a nice life. Yeah. I mean, he's a stranger. Just gave her a ride. Then I wrote some weird rally. So this is the pilgrimage. Okay. So the, everyone, is, like, a pilgrimage is just, like, kind of like a walking to some place. And there's some people who actually crawl there. Oh, or, like, on their knees. Crawling. And that's just that's just part of it because they're trying to be um, solemn, kind of. It's hard to explain. <laughs> it really is kind of like devoted in a way. It does remind me of I've um, during, so in the Catholic religion, some other religions that believe in like Christ. That during Holy Week, there's they do these things called Stations of the Cross, and sometimes people do crawling. They crawl. To each station. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. And there's like, so with this pilgrimage, there's people coming to see the Madonna because she's got healing powers, supposedly. This. Oh, is that why the crippled guy was there? Yes, that's why he's there. So people have crutches and everything. Like, there's, when you see in the church when they get in there, there's some crutches hanging, there's some canes hanging. Yeah. And that also reminds me of, this is in New Mexico, there's this little church, and it's got holy dirt. And people, like, after they feel like they've been healed by this holy dirt, they bring their crutches that they used to have, or their canes, or other things they used to help them, but now they don't need it anymore. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, holy water was far enough, but holy dirt. Yeah, there's a church in um, Santa Fe, and not Santa Fe, uh. It's in New Mexico. It's hard yeah, to explain. Was, uh, it's in like uh, Chimayo, oh, which okay. is a city in <laughs> New Mexico. It's called the Santuario. Okay. And there's holy dirt, and there's like there's praying to the Mary or the Madonna, and and you know that you find out that um, like Maria is actually Cabrera's first name. Yeah, you do find that out. That's her first name. It's her real first name, but she doesn't go by it. Yeah. She goes by her middle name, which is actually, being a Hispanic, I can kind of relate to that because a lot of people, like, use, have, like, the same first name, but different middle names. That's it's funny, weird. being white, a lot of people have the same middle name, but not the same first name. Yeah, it's weird. Because my cousin and my aunt, actually, yeah, my cousin and my aunt have the same middle name, but I call my aunt by her first name and I call my cousin by her middle name. Yeah, it's weird. Like, sometimes, like, I know there's a lot of, like, Jesuses or Jose's or Maria's, 
which is their first name, but mm-hmm. their middle name is something different, so people refer to them as their middle name. Yeah. I mean, it happens. It's like my my uncle, he's from El Salvador. Mm-hmm. Um, his first name is Jose, mm-hmm. but we call him Omar. That's his, his middle, middle name. name. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There's that explanation. Yeah. Um, so then they're at, like, this little hangout afterwards. It's like a picnic. Yeah. And she's angry because nothing's happened yet. And there's people playing with a, uh, playing soccer. And yeah. she throws the ball the opposite direction. <laughs> she just irritated, just pissed off. <laughs> I'm like, well, you can't expect a miracle right away. I wrote, uh, Kabiri is being a fool. <laughs> Um, so then she's, like, walking away, and she's watching the church people walking without their shoes. Yep. And, um, then she ends up at this magic show. Yeah, like, this magic hypnotist show. Which I do not believe in hypnotism. No. But, especially this this kind of hypnotism. Yeah, this is a very interesting show. Um, but so, she gets called up on the stage... And she she's up there with a big, big group of guys, and the magician does the big group of guys first and makes them pretend like they're on a boat, and then a hurricane comes, and so now they're swimming or dying or whatever, and then they get snapped out of it. And then he kind of takes advantage of her. and He does. Um, so he makes her basically go on a date with an invisible guy. His name is Oscar. Yes. So she goes on a date with him, and then she's like, um, I didn't write down everything that happens, but she, like, is walking she, around with him. She gets, like, this little flower crown, and just, like, she's being made a fool of, and she doesn't even know it. No, because she's hypnotized. Yep, and then the hypnotism's over, and she's pissed. Well, I'd be pissed, <laughs> of too. Of course. <laughs> I mean, she had to believe in it somewhat, because if she didn't, then it wouldn't have worked. Because that's how it works. If you don't believe in hypnotism, it doesn't work. If you believe in it, even just a little bit, it works. See, like, for me, if I had went up there, it wouldn't have worked. No. Because I am completely against it. Do not believe in it at all. So it would not have worked. It's just something with your mind, the way it works. Um, So then she leaves, and then there's this guy, like, standing outside... Well, she's standing outside for a little bit because she doesn't she doesn't want to go out really because all the guys are out there making fun of her. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's another guy that walks up to her as she um, is leaving, and says that he's Oscar. Yes, he's Oscar. And he's like, "Well, this isn't a coincidence." And I'm like, "No, you're an asshole." And it's like, no, maybe it just is a coincidence. And you're just being a dick. Yeah. I don't know. Um. But so he goes and takes her for a drink and says he wants to see her again. And then so they arrange a meeting. Yeah. And she's like, she shows up, but then she's like starting to leave. But then he sees her. So she doesn't get to leave. Yeah. They spend time together. They meet. Mm -hmm. And she tells her friends about him. Yep. But they don't believe her. And then they're all hanging out at their usual prostitute spot, and uh, the cops show up. So they all book it. Yeah, they're it's like, hilarious. they're like, shit. And they're they're all hiding in the bushes and everything. <laughs> and then um, she's hanging out with Oscar again, and uh, he tells her about his family. Mm-hmm. And then she's at home, and she just seems really happy. Yeah. She's like, hey, maybe I've met someone who's not going to be, like, a jerk and trying to steal all my money. Yeah. But then she um, goes to see him again, and she tells him that she can't see him anymore. Because she thinks it's that it's a hoax. Like, the same thing's going to happen. Yeah. And she's like, maybe, or, like, because of her, how, she, well, how her work, line of work is, yeah. too. And he's like, I don't care. And that's where you get the confirmation that she's a prostitute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's like, yeah, he says, I don't care. And then he he's wants like, to marry her. Yes. And I'm cool. like, that's a little weird. But I mean, it does happen. Like, you meet someone and you marry him. Because um, Stan Lee, I think he met his wife. And then, like, seven days later, they got married. Damn. And they were married a long time. 
So I mean, yeah. that happens sometimes. Not very often. No, not happens. very often. It does happen though. It's, it's just kind of weird. Yeah. Um. So he convinces her to get. He's like, she's like, okay. She's all happy and she's excited. They're gonna start like a new life together. Mm-hmm. So he says that he's like sold his. What was it? Cause his like business where he was and bought a new one somewhere yeah, different like and just help like so she's gonna do the same thing she's selling her house and mm-hmm. everything she packs up her house and wanda's all sad that she's leaving because that's her best friend pretty much yeah and uh so they're at the bus stop waiting on the bus and they're saying goodbye and then they're both sad and um she has all her money all her money from her house and everything she had, everything I guess, she in the saved too. Bank and all Which kinds is of a everything. lot. And then they're sitting at lunch, and she's so happy. And then Oscar's just kind of like moping. Yeah, cause she shows Oscar how much money she has. I'm like, yeah. oh, honey, that's never a good thing to do. <laughs> and uh, so then she keeps asking him, like, what's wrong and all this and that. And then they go on a walk. They're yep. walking through the woods. I'm like, first of all, that's your first mistake. I was like, that's not a good sign. <laughs> that's your first mistake. It's like, and uh, they're looking at, they're, they're walking through the woods and they come to like this cliff. Or the lake. And the lake. And they're looking at the sunset. And you're like, oh, how nice. And then she figures it out. She's like, she's, cause she says, she's like, well, um, I almost drowned one time. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Wait a minute. You just want my money. Yep. And she's like, just kill me. She, like, throws herself on the ground. And she's, like, super upset. And he's just like, okay. And he's like, oh, I don't want to kill you. She's like, here, just take it. She's like, just take Takes, it. Throws the purse at him. He just, like, he just takes her purse and just, just, just leaves. Just walks off. Yeah. Just leaves. And I'm then. Like, what a dick. She, like, sleeps there. Yeah. And then she wakes up and she's walking then these kids, like, some weird thing. Yeah, she, like, she's walking, she walks back to the road, the main road, and, like, there's people, like, singing and dancing around Playing her. guitars and stuff. She's maybe got, like, this, she looks like she has, like, a hopeful face on. Yeah. So it looks like they kind of inspired her, because it looks like a lot of them are together, and mm-hmm. it's just, like, a big group of friends that some of them are in love and stuff, and so... She's just very hopeful for what is to come. Yeah. That's what it seemed like to me. Just hopeful. Yeah. Nice hopeful ending, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, that's it. Um, music. Uh, the composer was Nino Rota. Yep. Born in 1911, he died in 1979. Um, he did some music. I don't know, ex- like like I said, I didn't write down what he did for this, but he um, did some stuff for The Godfather in 1972, um, Romeo and Juliet from 1968, The Godfather Part Two, 1974, and also he did some stuff for Eight and a Half. So my guess is a lot of it was maybe arranging it or so um, thinking too. some composing maybe, but not really a lot. Um, he did I win think. an this did win an award for music. Um, or no, he did win. Um, he won an award um, best music original dramatic score uh, for The Godfather Part Two. He won an Oscar for that. Um, my guess is helping it, um, but. He shared it with Carmen Capello, or Capello, um, because he wasn't present at the award ceremony, so, um, but he shared it with, um, Mm -hmm. I guess that's his co-composer or something for the Godfather music. Don't really know. So, the only real comparison is the musical that this was based off of, but I've never seen it. I know a little bit about it. Go for it. Just a little bit. I actually know the songs more than I know the musical. (laughs) And, um... It's pretty much the same story. Okay. Um, they were they wanted to change the ending. Actually, they wanted to change it more like to me like ah, I'm trying to think, more of a depressing I think ending, but um. that didn't go over well. So they changed it to the ending of how this movie ends. Okay. Some really good songs in there. Um, I was like, I'm like sweet charity, I'm like I know that musical, I know the name. 
And I was like, okay, so I now the story, now I know it. I know the songs yeah. from it. I just couldn't connect the two at first. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's like, speaking of Sweet Charity, I'll go into trivia. Yeah. But Sweet Charity. So it came out in 1969, the musical, and it starred Gwen Verdon. And she's she was a big Broadway lady. She did Sweet Charity. She starred in um, Damn Yankees also. Mm-hmm. So she was really big during that time period. So, two more. Okay. So, this is a director trademark, actually. So, there's always a vaudeville act in his movies. And this vaudeville act was The Hypnotist. Mm. And at eight and a half, it was like that crazy, weird scene at the end. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Fellini's kind of weird, but whatever. (laughs) And my last one, I thought this one was very interesting. So it won the Oscar, like Kat said earlier, but it only won by one vote. It beat this other <laughs> film by one, but the other film was Mother India from 1957, oh, okay. and it beat it by one vote. Dang. I was like, wow. So that could have gone either way. That's crazy. So one vote. I was like, okay, that's a good trivia. That is. That's really cool. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So where it has been on the list before, uh, before our list, when we looked at it, it was not on the list. Um, so for us, it's number 220, but as of right now, when we're recording, it is number 230. So Oh, dropped. Yeah, so there's a possibility it will be on the list at the end of the year, because they always do one for the, for the year. Yeah. Um, so there's a possibility it'll be on the list at the end of the year, but there's also a possibility it won't, because it keeps kind of fluctuating. My guess is it will, because it hasn't dropped very low. This is the lowest I've seen it. So, we'll see. Yeah. Um, previously, number 220, the 2010 list, Mary and Max from 2009, which is on our list. Love that movie. The 2012 list. It's actually funny. All of the movies that were previously at 220 have, are on our list. I see so that. <laughs> the 2012 list is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 from 2011, which is on our list, but we're going to skip it, like we said, because we're doing that in our Harry Potter event. So we will skip it when we come to it. The 2014 list is Rocky from 1976, which is coming up in a couple... It's next. next. It's next, yeah. It's next. Um, and then Gandhi is on the, is the 2016 list. Um, it was... Well, it's, it's a while ago now. Yeah. Let's see. Gandhi, um, Gandhi, Gandhi. And then Gandhi. as of today when we are recording, Monsters, Inc., from 2001, which was our movie a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Gandhi was quite a while ago, actually. Yeah, it was Gandhi. 227. Yeah. Gandhi was a while ago now. Good film, though. Yeah, it was good. It's kind of long, but it was good. It was worth it. Yeah. So, favorite line. Um, I've got a few. Okay. Do you want me to go first? Do you want me to go first? Because I always steal yours. Uh, go ahead. This was okay. kind of weird because it's a foreign film, so we're yeah. doing like dub versions and That's true. subtitles. Mine is so. subtitles. So. Okay, go ahead. Um, to hell with City Hall. She's yelling that at the people who are helping her out of the river. Okay. Uh, one of the people that she when she gets out of the river, they go, "She's got seven souls like a cat." I was like, "Okay." Oh yeah, I remember that line too. Um, I don't want nothing. You mind your own ass. <laughs> she yells that at Wanda when she's all mad. Uh, Kabiria's friends. Here comes the psycho again when Kabiria's walking up. I'll punch you a new face. She says that to the prostitute. <laughs> the, um, the lady. Did you ever see an idiot while well, you're looking at one? I think that was all I got. I have three. Okay. So, I forgot who she was saying this to, but she says, if you want a good look, good laugh, just take a look at your face. Mm. Like, nice that, slam. That might have been um, a different translation of a, did you ever see the idiot while you're looking at one? It's a possibility. Probably a possibility. Um, another one, you're bound to be understood by someone. That's a good one. And time for happiness comes for everyone. Ooh, those are both good. I don't think those were in mine, at least not that same translation. We had two different things we watched, because mine was a dub slash 
subtitled. It's, it's like very they... interesting how it came about, but I'm like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> it's like they got it was halfway hard. through. Oh, I got another one. Good. What? Another dog? <laughs> All the doggies. Um, what were the second two that you said? You're bound to be understood by someone, and time for happiness comes for everyone. Those are both really good. They are. I like both of those. I don't know which one to pick. I like the time for happiness one. So it's time for happiness comes for everyone? Time for happiness comes for everyone. So what'd you give it? I'm giving it a seven. Okay. Um, I don't know how to explain it. I'm, I'm giving it a seven as well. Um, mine, it was really funny and really entertaining for the first three-fourths of the movie. Then it gets to the end with the um, Oscar bit, and I'm yeah. like, I don't like this. This is, that's, the Oscar bit just took it away from everything. Like, the religion part, even though I didn't really understand it, it was still pretty funny and entertaining, and it kind of went with the movie. I understand the Oscar bit, but I just wish it wasn't there. So just that last... I think the, the way how that turned out is probably why I gave it a seven. Maybe because I was like, okay, maybe she's gonna, you know, there's some happiness for her finally because she keeps getting screwed over by everybody. Yeah. But nope. Yeah. I think that's what took it away from me. Yeah, I think so. And I kind of like figured something was up with it, so it's just. Just the ending wasn't my favorite bit, but the rest of the movie was really good. Yeah. So that's why it gets a seven. Because most of the movie was good, but the ending was not. Yeah, I'll give it that. Okay. So our next film is Rocky from 1976. Um, so... Yeah, Rocky. That's gonna be... There's, like, what, a total of six of them? Because there's Rocky... Rocky two, two, three, four, five, and then Rocky, Rocky Balboa. Balboa. So yeah, there's six. It's like unless you want to start including the Creed films, because there's two of those. Yeah, there's two Creed films. Um, we don't have time to watch all those. <laughs> I have all of the Rocky films. I don't have Creed one, and I am not planning on seeing Creed two because I haven't seen the first one. Yeah. And fighting movies aren't my thing. Yeah, I can so, talk. I've seen all five. I've seen okay. all six, actually, the regular Rocky movies. Then I will so. probably just watch Rocky, and you can talk about the rest of them. Okay. <laughs> I was like, in Rocky Balboa, I mean, that's, God, that's... But yeah. Uh, Love that one. That will be our next one. So, premium. We are offering premium for anyone that would like to become a premium member. Uh, if you do pay for premium... You will get uncut episodes, early release episodes, and special monthly episodes. All of that is a dollar a month. And then for five dollars a month, you get all of that plus you get to join us for a movie of your choice every 50 movies. Um, then also our special monthly episode that will be coming out for this month by the end of December is The Prince of Egypt, which is one of the movies, um, if you listen to our very first episode, that I thought should have been on the list that wasn't. So we'll be talking about the Prince of Egypt for that. And if you want to, uh, if you can't do the dollar a month or five dollars a month, but you do want to listen to the Prince of Egypt episode, it will be available for just a dollar to where you don't have to recurringly pay a dollar a month, but can just pay for that one episode. Um, also, if you can't support us by doing premium, you can always leave a review, which we are running a contest for that. If you leave a review, a positive written review, um, one out of every ten that leave one will be randomly selected to join us for a movie of their choice. So um, please do leave us a review. Please do. <laughs> and then also um, share the link to the show. Share um, our Twitter, share the Facebook page. Yeah. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can interact with us as well. Um, I'm pretty sure we both have it on our phones to where we can interact with you on any of them. Yep. So one of us will respond to you if you... We're nice. For the most part. <laughs> it, depends on, it depends on what you're talking about. 
Yeah. If you try to say Batman sucks, I'm not going to be the nicest person. I'll handle that one. (laughs) (laughs) But anyways, so um, you can contact us on any of their, or our email. Yep. Um, Our website is just Podbean. Um, You can find it via Podbean, which is also where every episode will be. And then our opening music and closing music and any music that we have is by Audio Binger. And you can find him on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and his website is audiobinger.net. And he just really wants people to listen to his music, so. It's really good, too. Yeah. And I think that's all we've got for this movie. Yep. All right, well, I'll see you for Rocky. Bye. Bye.